could I um, have your attention, please? Could I have your attention because I've got a very important task, which is to introduce and welcome up to the stage in a few moments that a cappello uh, group. But. <laughs> But before that, uh, on behalf of the Board of Trustees of UWC Atlantic College, I want to welcome everyone here to what is a, a very special occasion. This is always the most special day of the year for Atlantic College. It's special for the academic faculty who will have taught and advised you over the years, many of whom are here to acknowledge your achievements. But it's special too for all the other staff of the college who work tirelessly, often behind the scenes, to ensure that you get the very best UWC experience here at Atlanta College. And they too salute your success. And it's a special day for your loved ones, your family and friends. Um, and it's fantastic to see so many of them uh, here today. I know that many of you wouldn't have achieved what you have done if it wasn't for the, the support of your family and, and loved ones. So I think this is an ideal occasion for you, our graduating students, to stand up, face the back, and give your family and, and friends a standing ovation. But above all, above all, this day is special for you, our graduating students. You've worked very hard for what you've achieved. We're all immensely proud of you. And we do hope you'll stay in touch with each other and with the college over the coming years. My day job is running one of the Oxford colleges, which I've done for over 10 years, and by far the most enjoyable, and I'd say important part of that is getting to know not just the students when they're with us, but getting them to know them even better in the subsequent years as they become part of the worldwide alumni family of the college, and we are Oxford's most international college. We had an alumni gathering in San Francisco, San Francisco last, last month where there was a, a fascinating talk by someone who was actually a, 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 local, um, a local from around here. He, came from a, a state school, comprehensive school, uh, and went to Oxford as a, as a student, and then went to America with no resources, um, but did reasonably well. And it, Well, I know he certainly must have done reasonably well financially, because he just donated 75 million pounds to Oxford to help, <laughs> to help, help kids like him from Wales um, and elsewhere uh, get to Oxford on scholarships. And he was asked, um, what, what's the key to success? And he said, well, luck. You've got to be lucky. But you do make your own luck. And you do that through having the right vision, the resilience, um, working hard, and so on. Um, he, he's um, he, he's no, known as a bit of a Manchester United fan. He just wrote a book on leadership with Sir Alec Ferguson. Um, and after the talk, which is 9 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock um, uh, in the afternoon this time, he'd, he'd referred jokingly to the fact that Manchester United had just kicked off against Manchester C City. Um, and I, I, after the talk, I went out to the hotel lobby and the match was on the screen. It was halfway through and his team, Manchester United, were being absolutely destroyed. Uh, they were losing 2-0, to be fair, against by far the best team in the country, and they were away from home. Um, and they should have been 4 or 5 nil down. Now, many people in those situations, would have, their heads would have dropped, they would have uh, maybe given up, or at best, been defensive and tried to avoid humiliation by only losing 2-0. Um, instead, they were, Manchester United were resilient. Um, they did create their own luck. They managed to create three chances. They scored all three of them and won the match 3-2. And I thought that couldn't have been a better script for, for what he had been arguing about, about what determines uh, success. But actually, when he was talking, I was thinking of uh, Atlanta College and UWC more generally, why we are so uh, successful more than 50 years since having been founded. Now, part of it is obviously luck. 
having been donated a castle to base our operations in. Uh, but there's no doubt that we've, we've made our own luck as well through having a, a clear vision and being resilient. Um, and that's what you all need to, to do so, to carry on being as successful as you have been up till now. So uh, thank you very much and let me introduce the singers. Thank you.
Thank you to the acapella choir led by Bridget and Bianca for such a lovely start to this afternoon's celebrations. My name's Peter Howe, and I'm honored to be the principal of UWC Atlantic College. Dear students, parents, families, donors, honored guests, and staff of the college, welcome to the 2018 Leaving Class Ceremony. Today is a particularly powerful moment in time as our students' UWC apprenticeship ends and our graduates are released across the globe to serve our mission to make education a force to unite people, nations, and cultures for peace and a sustainable future. Of, co of course, this is also a daunting moment, as I imagine many of our graduating class are unsure about their future paths. Don't worry, it will all work out if you trust the process. One need look no further than the career of today's guest speaker, Ruth Rawling, UWC Atlantic College Class of 76, as an example of the impact your UWC apprenticeship can have. Ruth has enjoyed a distinguished international career solving problems at the intersection of industry, government, and society in the private and public sectors, notably in food, agriculture, and sustainability. Most recently, she retired from the position of Vice President of Global Corporate Affairs at Cargill, a 120 billion global agricultural and food ingredient company. Yet I am sure Ruth would be the first to admit that in May 1976, she had little idea of where her path would lead. After leaving UWCAC, she paused to reflect and spent a gap year in Germany. Ruth then went on to attend the University of Manchester, graduating with first class honors. In her early career from 1981 to 1993, Ruth worked for the UK's Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food in London, and then in Brussels for Sir Leon Britton at the European Commission and as First Secretary, Agriculture for the British Foreign Office. Joining Cargill in 1993, she built the European Corporate Affairs Team from a fledgling two-person operation in the UK to a unit covering Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, operating out of multiple countries. Living her UWC values within the corporate sector, one of Ruth's proudest moments was to broker the Amazon Soya moratorium between Cargill and NGOs, including Greenpeace, which saved an area of rainforest approximately the size of Belgium from agricultural encroachment and changed the relationship between agriculture and the Amazon forest in Brazil. The agreement continues to this day. As a long-standing member of Cargill's corporate affairs leadership team, in 2014, Ruth moved to Minneapolis, USA to develop an innovative approach to managing global issues such as sustainability, food security, and human rights. The Cargo Board subsequently adopted sustainability and thought leadership as core capabilities thanks to Ruth's efforts. Before retiring in 2017, she led global corporate affairs, reporting to the CEO. Please join me in welcoming our guest of honor and speaker, alumna Ruth Rawling. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, governors, teachers, staff, parents, first years, but most importantly today, second years, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations to the class of 2018 on your graduation from AC. You made it. You survived these two years. You thrived these two years. You laughed, cried, achieved these two years. Exams are over now. Three cheers for you. Let's celebrate whom you have become because you have changed these two years. You are not the people who came here two years ago. You will not yet know how profoundly AC has changed you. 
AC changed me. I first came here 44 years ago. Yes, I really am that old <laughs> and that young. As Henry Ford said, anyone who stops learning is old, whether 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. The greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young. I don't think I've ever stopped learning. And so I'm 18, really, with 41 years experience. I grew up in a small town 200 miles from here. I came to AC with a limited outlook. Not a good or bad one, just a very limited one. AC taught me to question assumptions I had always taken for granted. It taught me to realize that others had different realities based on equally valid assumptions. AC opened my eyes to difference and to suspending judgment on difference for the sake of it. In the days of Brexit and Trump, that knowledge and understanding of international values and diversity feels under threat. But these are passing things. And I know that that knowledge and understanding won't leave you. When I left AC, I wanted to experience more difference. I went to Germany because I'd learned German as my second language. My parents were very shocked. They thought I was going to drop out. But as a result of my gap year, I changed my university course, and that changed my career path. It set me on track to work with European and international colleagues in government and business. So AC changed my life, as it will change yours. You're anxious and excited today whether you're going to start a gap year, college, university, national service, or whether you're returning home. I know you'll be excited and anxious about your step into the unknown. But have confidence that AC has prepared you well, not just academically, but also an education in values and in thinking about others. You're leaving behind, however, friends and a very familiar place that you've invested in. You are right to treasure this moment and to mourn as well as celebrate. I share these feelings. I'm anxious and excited about the future, too. I'm on the threshold of the next phase of my life the third age, as some people call it. I'm done with full-time work, but I'm embarking on a portfolio career of part-time work, volunteering, and some leisure. And so I'm leaving behind all the certainties and familiarities of my career to date. Am I good enough to do something different? Am I brave enough? Will it satisfy me? How will I make it work? You see, I'm asking myself the same questions that you're asking yourselves. But you will say to me, well, you must be so much better prepared than we are. After all, you've had 40 years to sort this out. So here are my notes to myself that I gladly share with you, my younger selves, and if any one of these can help you in your learning process, then I will feel I've done what I set out to do. Do not underestimate yourselves. History is more fluid than you imagine. From the offices of the European Commission, I watched the Cold War certainty of my childhood and studenthood disintegrate before my eyes as the wall came down in 1989. 
Things are not set in stone. You can lead change. You can make a difference in the world of business, in government, in international organizations, in civil society. You can change lives for many people. Never be afraid to raise your hand and volunteer for something you do not know if you can do. I didn't know straight after college that I could arrange an international choir tour, but I did it. Always remember, there's more than one way forward. Face into failure and move on. In my last months in AC, I was turned down for Oxford University. For a week, maybe a month, felt like the end of my life. Today, I would say it was their loss. <laughs> my life took a different direction. I spent a year in Germany, I went to Manchester, I had a great four years, I made many friends I still have. So the moral is embrace wherever life takes you. And don't be afraid if it feels like a lonely path. And that lonely path is taking you to the edge of things. Explore the edges. Innovation happens at the edge of things, where existing disciplines and knowledge touch or collide. It's by definition uninhabited. As graduates of AC, you have a unique breadth of understanding, and you'll find these edges, and you will create certainty around them, others will join you, and the path will not be lonely anymore. Know that in a series of decisions, there are turning points, and the decisions at these points are the critical ones. Um, I was working for Cargill. I was negotiating with Greenpeace on this Sawyer moratorium, and we had to do something to halt the deforestation in the Amazon while keeping the farming community going. Greenpeace wanted the talks between industry and the NGOs to be in London. But I knew that something imposed from London would not stick. I insisted the talks were held in Brazil, in Portuguese, which meant I sidelined my own role. It was the best decision I ever made. The Sawyer Moratorium details were hammered out by those who had something at stake. I put a facilitator in place and I shouted encouragement from the sidelines. Twelve years later, the agreement's in place and we have reduced the rate of deforestation by 80% and kept the farmers farming. That's what I call sustainable change, working on an environmental, social, and economic level. As leaders, and you are all leaders, you will make mistakes. You'll feel vulnerable because you don't know everything and you can't be everywhere. As you learn from your mistakes, do not be afraid to show vulnerability. It will enrich your life and your relationships. Others, it will create followership. Others will expand the reach of your ideas. You do not have to do everything yourself. And listen to others, because that diversity of thinking will give you better results. Finally, be true to yourself and your values. Have the courage of your convictions. Work at something you believe in. You will enjoy it much more, be far better at it, and you'll sleep at night 
knowing that what you're doing is right. And if you're still not sure exactly what this is, it's fine. Some of us are late developers. So today, as you leave the college, you're not alone. You become part of the 60,000 strong network of alumni from AC and the 17 colleges of the UWC movement. Reach out to the network, and by doing so, you will also help it grow and help continue the work of the colleges, promoting international understanding and knowledge in the service of the greater good. The network stands ready to help you. So with apologies to John Dunn, no man nor woman is an island entire of itself. Every man and every woman is a piece of a continent, a part of the main. Welcome to our network. Now, let's focus on today. Let's celebrate, enjoy the last hours here. And when you move on from here, with your hopes and dreams for the future, keep your feet on the ground, but feel able and feel supported to reach for the moon. And if you reach it or not, I know you will make a positive difference in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth, for your inspirational words. And I'd now like to invite Ellie to the stage for the second musical act.
And now may I invite Madalena to give the first year speech. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm, I thought I wouldn't be very good at his speeches because I've never done it before. So I decided to write you a letter. Dear second years, I am here reading out loud a letter of confessions. I am standing in front of you to share this part of me. But as I am doing this, I want you to remember that when making these confessions, I am also exposing myself. I am undressing my soul, showing off my flaws. I am giving you big hidden parts of me. I am giving you my vulnerability. And I'm only capable of such thing for love. I'm vulnerable for love. I'm vulnerable for you. I want to start by confessing one of my biggest fears. And it might even sound strange to you, but my biggest conscious fear is, as long as I can remember, time. Time. Because the truth is, we do only live once. Because the truth is that we do only have one chance. We only have one time. So, what if I'm not using it right? What if I'm drowning myself in the comfort of my everyday routine, forgetting there is so much more than this? What if I'm not appreciating everything around me as much as I should? What if I'm not appreciating the people around me, all these people, the most incredible people I will ever get to know? Did I appreciate you enough? Change is constant throughout our lives, and we do not get to say stop, and we do not get to rewind. So this time, this one time, we got to make it count. We only got to live together and build this intimacy with each other over this one year. We only got this one time. And me, I want to stop. I want to rewind. I want to live it all again. Time flies, they say, but aren't they right? This year did fly, but it was all worth it. This year was everything we could have made out of it. It was a beautiful, loving mess. And the same way time flies, so are you. You are about to spread your magnificent wings and fly away. You are about to change the world in the ravishing ways only you know how. You are about to start a life that is meaningful to you and, I am certain, will and is already meaningful to so many others. It was this year that I confirmed the existence of a certain characteristic in me. I found that I am selfish. I am angry at it. I am so selfish it makes me feel furious at myself. I found a selfishness growing within me when I started thinking of you leaving this place, when I realized how important you have become to me, when I realized how dependent I have become on you. You are the most incredible group of people I have met. You changed and shaped my opinions, my mind, my life, every day, with all your little perfect things, with your wise words, with your kind actions, with your astonishing thoughts and ideas, with your loving hearts, with your beautiful, simple existence. You are the most incredible group of people I have met. So how am I, how am I, how are we supposed to keep living our lives without you by our side? I feel my chest aching because of the sadness that insists on consuming me. The fear of living without you next to us corrupts my being, leaves me breathless, destroys the ground underneath my feet. And besides all these intense emotions, what remains strong and undefeatable is love, is hope. I am hopeful. I am hopeful for us, the ones staying behind, because we did have the best teachers, the best friends, this one amazing family. From how to change bed sheets to deal with alcohol poisoning, <laughs> from how to cook pasta to heal a broken heart, from finding ourselves to learn how to love even the person that differs the most from us. You taught us all of this. You taught us how to be human, how to live in this world. I am hopeful because I believe. I believe in you. I believe in all of you, in every single one of you. I wish with all my heart that someday you will all recognize how radiant and spectacular you, are, you all are. I am hopeful because I know that the moment you walk out of this place will also be the moment, the beginning of great things. The moment you walk out of this place will mean the start of happiness for so many others around this world because you do bring happiness to other people. 
I am living proof of that. And while I stand here without any ability to make predictions, I know. I know that you will save so many people's lives just by making them feel worth it. You will save the world because here we got taught that all of us matter, that all our actions are, are important. All our actions make a difference. Here we learned about the other countries, cultures, social justice, sciences, sustainability, queerness, but, but most importantly, we learned about people. We learned about ourselves. Here we live UWC, but it does not stay here. It does not belong here, and it does not belong to us. We are just temporary carriers of the mission. It is our job, it just became your job, to share it with every person that you will possibly encounter throughout your life. It might be through donations, through communal service, through the offering of an education, or simply through a conversation, a smile. It is now your job to keep UWC alive within you, but most importantly, to bring it to life wherever you go. And I am hopeful because I know, yes, I know, that you will succeed. And I am grateful. I am so grateful. I am grateful I got to meet you. I am grateful we got to be friends. I am grateful we will continue to be friends. I am grateful for the moments. I am grateful for the memories. I am grateful for all the love we got to share. I am grateful I am alive, that I got to experience all of this. I am grateful it is you. I am grateful it was you. And you will go out and make a change. And you'll make so many people fall on their knees for all the gratitude they will feel. Because this world needs dreamers, and this world needs doers. But above all, this world needs you. This world needs dreamers who do. So go, spread your wings, fly away. And until you find back your way, thank you. We will see you soon. Love, Madalena. Love, your first years. Well, if your heart wasn't aching before, it certainly is now. I'd like to now invite the spoken word group to the stage. Just yesterday. yesterday, I was walking across the cliffs of St. David's in a wetsuit as is tradition, looking at the frigid, salty water, getting ready to prove something to myself and the people behind me. My heart was pounding, not wanting to tremble. Just jump, I told myself. I was starting what I didn't know would be two years of jumping. I was nervous of what lay ahead, nervous to descend into a crowd of second years, all mature with all their lives seemingly put together, nervous to be in a new country, nervous to no longer be with my mom, nervous to know if I would make any friends. But two years later, we find ourselves on another cliff. Here we are taking another jump. But tell me, how can two years feel like one? How can all my memories blend into one? How can every term be better than the last one? Except third term, of course. <laughs> <laughs> how did I become best friends with the best people from all over the world? We constantly say how we want to leave this place, how we want anything better than the back of Lanswood, how we want some real sun for a change and we want the constant raindrops to stop mirroring our tears. But standing here today, why the hell would you want to leave? These people, we've spent every waking moment with them. The beautiful castle which haunted us once night fell at 4 p.m., the sheep and the G whose identity we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> This is the two years we never thought would be the best years of our lives. To endless nights of laughter spent in smelly drying rooms. To skinny dipping at 3 a.m. when our house friends just sent us to bed. To taking the main drive path to the suburbs just so we could finish our heated conversations. To stealing house supplies or safekeeping the chocolate spread or the eggs, which came in handy for Friday night warfare. Sorry, duty dorm. 
Talking about our problems till 2 a.m. and waking up in each other's beds the next morning. Doing things we shouldn't just to impress a certain group of people and realizing the people we already have are good enough. But this is what AC is. It's the time of our lives. The best and the worst of us. It's just the beginning of what is going to be an endless journey. A constant jump. It's what I imagine adulting and growing up felt like when I was younger. This is our time to turn the page. To start a new chapter. This is our time to move the bookmark. Continue our journey. Not skipping over any pages. Because these, these are, are the days, days we'll feel the most alive, alive and, and never, never forget. forget. I'll never forget the A's that have been the hellos of my squad. <laughs> or the way they look when they wake up next to me after yet another 10 minutes studying up from bio. I'll never forget the most amazing memories that I have spent with the most amazing people. I remember our second years told us to make the most of the days, because time flies. Every day will feel like the last. And the weeks will feel quicker and quicker. You don't realize in the moment when you're just chilling in the coffee lounge, laughing together over things our parents do that we thought were unique, that in that moment you're making a memory. You don't realize in the moment when you're finally talking to the girl whose Instagram you stalked before coming here that this moment will change your life without you knowing it. We have become a family, a very ethnically confusing one, but a family nonetheless. This is to care free days. To care full days. When you think that a relationship is worth the world until you realize your IB is probably worth more. <laughs> when numbering our sleepless nights is supposed to be cool. Shout out to the sunny late night squad. The days, the days that we will never forget. The, the days, days that, that have shaped, shaped the beginning, beginning of our, our lives. lives. If someone had tapped me on the shoulder two years ago and asked me about the girl in my camp dorm room who reminded me of her friendly faces from home, I wouldn't have been able to predict that she's now a part of my bougie Bangla squad. <laughs> the girl whose meme addiction I will never understand is now one of my best friends. <laughs> but in 15 hours, in 15 hours, what does it all mean? The girl whose meme addiction I don't understand is gonna be miles away. And the girl that I call Casserole McGrinch, also miles away. Uh, and the kids from the same continent will be in the same country. But multiple flights away, it's all over in a day. Well, 15 hours. So make it worth it. Make it memorable. Don't wish these hours were over. Wish they last longer. Because before you know it, it will actually be all over. You'll no longer be able to pop into your house friend's home to eat food from any continent and finally get some adult advice. No longer be able to huddle with your best friends in the uni room and grab the last brownie before break ends. No more trading one year of your life every time you eat kebab. <laughs> no more watching yet another episode of Friends or another horror movie, collectively procrastinating. No more joking about making cocaine for a living in chem class. <laughs> You won't get to chant Bevo on the walk back from yet another techno soch or rehearse endlessly for another performance on the Tithe Barn stage. You're gonna go to your final bonding. And you're gonna take your final walk at the seafront. You say left, right, left, right. One last time as you walk across the cliff. With your wellies on. And maybe for some of us. This is goodbye. Our final goodbye. But for some, like the girl from Wisconsin. And the girl whose Instagram I stopped before coming here. This is just a see, see you, you later. later. Okay, I'd like to call Al Moos to teach to the stage. Um, Christian. <laughs> Henny. And Graham, if you could come to the stage, please. Uh, 
Nicole. Matt. Clarissa. And Julie's tutees. Maya. Francesco. <laughs> Maya. And Alexia. <laughs> and Margot, could you come to the stage? Yanuk. Rahul? Thank you very much. Tian. And May. <laughs> and Phil's group, Adiel. Um, you need. And Samrin.
and Rob's, Rob's duties. Azza. Pavitra. And Celia. And now to the students leaving Morganuk House. Um, Henny. Uh, Isha. Adrian. Iona. Christopher. And Eva. Can you Mutton come to the stage?
And Dahlia. Pablo. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, more. Oh, next tutor is Nick. Uh, Mohammed. Um, Emma. <laughs> well done. Elena. Tutor is Nick Chambier. <laughs> and Sherry. Congratulations. Um, and Davide. Celia. Tutor is uh, Michael Yardley. <laughs> Beth. <laughs> Yuli.
Fritjof. And Johan. Pentecuri House. Perez. <laughs> Leah Celine. Ramsey. And now Martin Groves, tutor group. Afraz. Jay, mercy. Now for 
Knuckles, tutor group. Tate. Laura. And now Sally's tutor group. <laughs> Naima. <laughs> Lorenzo. Ava. <laughs> Ethan. <laughs> and Jasmine. And now for the stu students leaving Powers House. <laughs> Ellen? Can I have a lens? Bridget. Cat 
Serena. Denise. Bianca. Maduo Shania. Introduce my lovely husband, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany. Yardley, please. Victor. (laughs) 
tell you. Sonali. Nina. Ubaid. Selma. Rachel? <laughs> Tomoki? Mandolin. Can I ask Peter's duty to come up, please? <laughs> Bye, Bav. Cuties, Santiago. <laughs> I 
and Terry. Okay, and now Katrin's two teeth. Starting with Maya. <laughs> and Luna. Anunzil. <laughs> 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 to invite Graham Smith to the stage and his duty, Arthur. <laughs> and now for Mark Godwin's duty, Arshad. And now for Louise's duties, starting with Olivia. <laughs> and Aisha. And Che. Okay, and I'd like to invite Martin back on the stage for his duty, Frederick. And I'd like to invite Nadal onto the stage for his TV. First of all, Joelle. <laughs> Fadia.
Erin. Hitomi. Cameron. Iman. Aditi. And for Peter's duty, Lissadel. <laughs> and finally, Rob Scott's duty, Kim. So I would like to call now uh, Thais House uh, Leavers uh, students. First, Gabor Stutis, Giacchino. <laughs> Martin. Vina. Head duties. Olympia. <laughs> Cuba. Jai.
Grace. Esther. I would like to call John. Benda. I would I would like to call Matthew. Uh, just Matthew. <laughs> Matthew <laughs> Hand. <laughs> Iman. Bibiana. Mena. Emily. Astrid. Takashi. I would like to call Peter House Duty, Matthew.
I would like to call Sylvie. <laughs> you are. Oliver. Maria. So I'd like to call up um, Whitaker House Leavers 2018. Uh, first of all, as Bjorn. Okay. Abu. Adrian's cuties. First of all, we have Alina. And then we have Izzy. <laughs> and now we have Catherine's duty. Aisha. And Graham's duties. So first of all, we have Lucy. And next we have Noah. <laughs> and Tito. And next we have Julie's duty. <laughs> Sophia. <laughs> and next we have Mark's duty.
and bar. And next we have Kate Tutees. First of all, Ten Sin. <laughs> next we have Sienna. And unfortunately, Lucy can't be here today. Um, so Phil is standing in as buddy tutor for Lucy Mayo's tutor group. So first of all, we have Julian. And Ruben. I'd now like to ask Ferez and Yanuk to come forward to offer remembrance to Harry Westcott and Rose Chambers. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you all for coming. On behalf of all her friends, I would like to tell you something about a dear friend um, called Rose, who should have been here today to graduate with us. She, uh, Rose was a gentle and a sensitive person who loved nature and animals and would have given anything to anyone to make their day a little bit better. In other words, she was selfless. If you ever needed someone to talk to, Rose was there as a listening ear. She was lovely and dependable friends, and we had great times together. Um, these are the words that Rose expressed before she left. I'm so grateful for everything Atlantic College has been and will continue to be. I love everyone in this community with my whole heart. The year and a bit that we spent at AC has been the best year of my life, and it's all down to the amazing people that you all are. Thank you so much. In short, sorry. <laughs> In a short while, we will ask you to spend a minute of silence to remember Rose and Harry.
both spirited, passionate, and truly amazing people. May their memories and kindness live on forever. Thank you. Today we stand together in remembrance of Harry Westcott. We lost Harry last year, earlier this year, and when we lost him, we lost a friend. We lost a student, and we lost a really loving and caring person. Thank you, Harry Westcott, for enlightening us, for teaching us, for accompanying us, and for the meantime, until the next one, mate. Now that was the, the, now that was the speech approved by the school yesterday. After a month-long appeal for us to be able to stand here and speak, after much negotiations, we were only given a minute of silence and a two-line speech that was scrutinized and tweaked by school officials, a speech that lacks information as a condition. They forgot that I'm Syrian, and they forgot that I'm, I'm a rebel. A wise Polish poet once said, in a room where people unanimously maintain a conspiracy of silence, one word of truth sounds like a pistol shot and I'm fully loaded today. We stand here today to speak in memory of those who were overheard when alive and overlooked when they passed away. People that meant much more than just threats to the school's reputation. Friends, family members, people who gave and took, people with whom we shared our lives, we shared our dorms, we shared our house, we shared this place and this experience. I stand here today hoping that I'm speaking up for many out here. Our school is ranked outstanding in terms of mental health. What is outstanding is how well they can evade their responsibilities. Responsibility officials, responsibility, a clear line that distinguishes fault from responsibility, and you don't seem to see it. It might not be your fault that three AC students took their own lives in the past five years. Two of those were on campus, two during their times on campus. But it is for damn sure, it is your responsibility. It is your responsibility, and I repeat, it is your responsibility to stand up, learn from it, and do something about it. Staff, children, private issues, substance abuse, they managed to see all of those problems but they were not able to find one wrong thing about the mental health support system in our school. Maybe it is because 350 students have only one counselor which the school doesn't even pay for. Or maybe because the only people who are concerned about the mental health in school are students. Both times there was something to blame or someone's habit to shame with absolutely no one to stand up, fire the pistol or exclaim. Now I stand and I tell you all of this to all the stakeholders, to all the decision makers, to all the students, the staff, parents, everyone who's sharing this today, I will leave you with this and your consciousness to take actions beyond today. Harry Westcott, Colin Achgill, Rose Chambers, may your beautiful souls rest in peace. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Faraz and Yanuk. I'd now like to invite John and Joelle to give the second year address. Life at AC is full of questions. Questions such as? How quickly can you learn a whole chapter of the syllabus one night before the test? How many first codes can you really skip? How do you undertake the world's most complicated spy mission? Of cracking the school's high-tech security system in order to get into your best friend's house after check-in. Hint, all it takes is a fork. And a little creativity. Yeah. <laughs> 
but also much more serious questions. Such as, how do you show your friends just how much they mean to you? How do you really make the most out of this place? Especially when time seems to go faster than the speed of light. AC is also full of dilemmas, such as? Do I order in because it's meat-free Monday? Or do I brave the canteen? Do I sleep or do I write this speech? Because let's be honest. Like every IA, every assignment deadline, and every EE deadline. It's 3 AM, the night before it's due. And once again, that time that you should have spent writing that paper. Or studying for that test. Or in our case, writing the speech. Has been spent instead. Going to land to it for no real apparent reason. Enjoying the sun at the seafront. And laughing with your friends until your stomach hurts. Of course. You always choose the laughter, the trips to Lantwit, and the late-night adventures sneaking out, out, uh, sneaking out of your window. Because in the words of one of our second years, you can always retake a test, but you can never remake a memory. It is with this mantra in mind that all of us have tried, some of us more successful than others, to find that perfect balance between sleeping, studying, and socializing. And even if you haven't managed to find it yet, <laughs> don't worry, because at least you finished the IB. Yeah. You've seen us in front of you dozens of times. Joking, laughing, and presenting every kind of show you can imagine. But today we want to take the opportunity to speak to you from the bottom of our hearts. Nothing to advertise, nothing to MC, nothing to joke about. To talk to all of you and to have the chance, once before we leave AC, to honestly tell you how we feel. Tell you how much you mean to us. To express our deepest gratitude for allowing yourselves to, to become, become our, our family. family. From every code, every assembly, and every bonding. We have all been there together. Look around you. Each and every one of us have met some of the most incredible people we will ever have the privilege of meeting. And leaving, it's gonna be really hard. But in the words of our favorite philosopher, Winnie the Pooh. How lucky, lucky we, we are who? to have, have some something that makes, makes saying, saying goodbye, goodbye so difficult. difficult. Our fingerprints, they don't fade from the lives that we touch. And that is hard to realize, but it's even harder to appreciate. Our time has come to say goodbye to each other. But in each other's memories, we live on forever. Sadly, we can't start the next chapter of our life if we keep on rereading the last one. But it'll always be there to look back on, and that's what matters if you ever need reminding. It will always be there. We will always be there. 10, 20, 30 years from now. No. Ah. <laughs> oh, who knows? Oh, where, where are we? Oh, who knows where? And we all. Wh who knows? Who knows where we will all be? <laughs> the world's a small place. Perhaps we'll run into each other. In fact, I'm sure we will. Whether it's a chance encounter at a pub in London, a friend coming to visit, or a reunion back in our dorms. Where it feels like today was yesterday. Even though it's been 20 years. From today forward. Family doesn't live in one place. Love doesn't live in one place. Family is on every continent. Waiting for, um, waiting for you to visit and always waiting for you to catch up. When we were writing this, we thought, what sort of message are we going to convey? But we have already said it. Just be present. Open up and be present to the moments that are unfolding before your eyes. Life is just made up of lots and lots of moments. So don't lose them being stuck in the past or anticipating the future. Right now is one of our final moments in this place. Don't be upset. Well, you kind of you want to be upset, but embrace it. Embrace it like we embrace each other after a long break. Embrace it like you embrace the opportunity to be here. Embrace it like you embraced your friends when they were upset. Embrace it like you embraced the first years when you realized that somehow you actually love them just as much as your second years. Embrace it like the rare time that Graham said that was actually decent. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace it like you would embrace a Jaeger bomb at Marcos. Embrace it like a hug from your house parent. Embrace it like your highest highs and your lowest lows. This is our moment and we have to embrace it. We have made it. Two years of academic torture, two years of emotional sacrifices, and two years of making some of the best friendships we will ever have. We're all going down separate paths, but never feel as though the path you tread isn't the right one. We're all going our own way in life, and that's fine. The only time it should ever be okay to follow somebody else's path is when you're lost on the way to Cambodia. <laughs> that bright flashing light that you see may as well be an alert to where a bonding is happening in the pitch darkness. But just remember, 
Like the flashing light at the bondum. Friends are like stars. You can't always see them. But you know they're always there. Our time here is over, but our lives are just beginning. AC was just a catalyst that brought us closer and helped us discover who we were as people. And for that, we will all be eternally grateful. So thank you to everyone who has been there on our journey. Thank you to our house parents, to our teachers, to the night staff, the canteen staff, our cleaners, our tutors, our parents, and our friends. For helping us to find ourselves. And for helping us to start to become the people that we want to be. So that once we leave here, each of us will be a force that can truly change the world. Congratulations, AC Class of 2018. And in the words of Ken Korn, now, now go, go make, make a, a difference. difference. Could I please welcome Rina, Nori, Ayusha, Nicole, and Aza for the final musical performance?
someone who can finish, finish your sentences. sentences. Who knows not to just lend a hand or an ear when you need them to give you their spine. Who will remember every single one of your birthdays. January 11th. Without checking Facebook. Who won't freak out if you're hanging out and accidentally fart. When the fire takes all you have, my home will be your home. When they call your number for the draft, I will enlist and fight beside you. And I will march with you from PK to Sally and back as many times as it takes. We will stand together because it didn't start with us. It started with Harry, Ron, Hermione. It started with Paul Belcher and Nick Jean-Bier. Watson and Sherlock. And it continues with us. And they could tell you what a miracle this is. They could tell you how rare this is. They could tell you how rare friendship always is. The cards are always stacked against you. The odds are always low. But I have seen the best of you. And the worst of you. And, and I, I choose both. I want to share every single one of your sunshines and save some for later. I will tuck them into my pockets and give them back to you when the world strains fall hard. And when the walls come down. When the thunder rumbles. When no I won't let go. I can play the tambourine or try and give us beats. <laughs> I would be remiss in my remarks today if I did not pay tribute to the wider UWC movement, which now numbers 17 schools and colleges across the globe, many of which are holding their leaving class ceremonies today. The movement is a testament to the brilliance of the idea which began on the shores of the Bristol Channel in 1962 with the birth of what was then known as the Atlantic College. Founded at the height of the Cold War, the college has served as a beacon for peace throughout its history, a place where bonds of friendship are formed which transcend nationalist ties. Today, while the Iron Curtain that descended across Europe following the Second World War may have lifted, the world remains deeply fractured and along far less clear fault lines than the old Soviet West divide. In building our community, we recruit students from many of these conflicts and post-conflict societies, seeking, wherever possible, representation from both sides. We also draw students from across the socioeconomic, religious, cultural, and geopolitical spectrum. This deliberately diverse, motivated, and engaged community lies at the heart of the UWC model of education. But assembling this community is only the preparation for the experiment. The next stage, as the mission declares, is to use education as a force, in particular, a force to build and nurture a caring, empathetic, and thoughtful community. And in so doing, to demonstrate 
to all its members the power that such a community can wield in supporting personal development and fostering positive change. Just as the diversity of the UWC is deliberate, so too is our approach with its emphasis on experiential learning. This begins with the nature of the relationship between the staff and students. Whenever possible, it is non-hierarchical and co-creative. We do not ascribe to the structure of a traditional school, but rather push responsibility to the lowest level possible, which, more often than not, is with the student. We work on a first-name basis, and all teachers and many non-teaching staff participate in the co-curricular service and pastoral programs as we aspire to provide space for innovation, failure, and new ideas. For this approach to work, trust, respect, and a sense of emotional security are essential. We, the adults of the community, must open our hearts, offer unconditional support, and let go of judgment and control. We also believe in the growth mindset, a concept championed by psychologist Carol Dweck in her groundbreaking book, Mindset. Dweck distinguishes between what she described as the growth and fixed mindset. In a fixed mindset, people believe their basic qualities, like their intelligence or talent, are simply fixed traits. They spend their time documenting their intelligence or talent instead of developing them. They also believe that talent alone creates success without effort. Dweck's research demonstrated that students who have adopted a fixed mindset, the belief that they are either smart or dumb, and there is no way to change this, may learn less than those than they could learn or at a slower rate while also shying away from challenges, since poor performance might either confirm that they can't learn if they believe they are dumb or indicate that they are less intelligent than they think if they believe they are smart. Dweck's finding also suggests that when people with fixed mindsets fail at something, as they inevitably will, they tend to tell themselves they can't or won't be able to do it, or they make excuses to rationalize the failure. Alternatively, in a growth mindset, people believe that their basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Brains and talent are just the starting point. This view fosters a love of learning and a resilience that is essential for great accomplishment. It is for this reason that we record effort and engagement on our reports for students. For us, this is the most important measure, as a student's potential is unknown and unknowable and effort is the one thing they can control. The power of our students' belief that they can achieve much through dedication and hard work is perhaps no better illustrated than in the primary role that student initiative has played in the proud history of our college. And this year was no different with the formation of the conference board, the disciplinary board, the project week committee, and the central role our students have been playing in our co-production strategic exercise, to name a few. I'd like to believe that what we produce in our graduates, graduates is a willingness, a willingness to listen for understanding, a willingness to learn, particularly through exposure to difference, a willingness to try and to fail and try again, a willingness to speak out against injustice and to take action, a willingness to lead and also to follow, a willingness to care and to let people know that they do, a willingness to show vulnerability and gratitude. And on that note, I would like to show gratitude. Gratitude to Wales and the Vale of Glamorgan for supporting us and allowing us to make our homes in such a beautiful part of the world. Gratitude to you, the parents, for entrusting us with your most precious children and then allowing them to realize their enormous potential in our care. Without your trust, we would not be able to do what we do. Gratitude to all the national committees, 160 strong worldwide, who tirelessly undertake the task primarily on a voluntary basis to find students of promise and potential to join our residential community. We had the pleasure of welcoming over 90 countries and territories to our school this past year. The diversity we celebrate would not be possible without the efforts of national committees. Gratitude to our donors who, through their generosity, allow us to be innovators in education and to provide opportunity to students who would not otherwise be able to benefit from a UWC Atlantic College education. Gratitude to our service learning and community partners who allow our students to learn by doing, by experiencing firsthand that to give is also to receive. Involvement with our local community is a fundamental part of life at the college. And finally, gratitude to the college's staff who work tirelessly to support our students in what they do from the mundane to the profound. 
As I hope you all know, the expectations placed on staff at a UWC go above and beyond the routine. As personal tutors, classroom teachers, house parents, residence assistants, activity and service leaders, administrators, cleaners, kitchen and estate staff, and leadership team members, they are there to support you through good times and bad, and to participate alongside you in fulfilling the UWC mission. Without their dedication, sacrifice, and talents, the college could not function. This year, we're saying goodbye to a number of departing staff members, and I would like to take the opportunity to honour the five longest serving who have made an indelible mark during their time here. The rookie of this group is Sue Andrews, who started the college in September 2003 as an administrative officer in the student administration office with a focus on university guidance. Sue supported the work of a legendary vice principal at the college, Gareth Reese. And as Gareth would tell you, he could not have done half of what he did at the college without her exceptional dedication, hard work, and commitment. With Gareth's departure in 2009, Sue provided continuity in the university's office as the sidekick for Sally Norris and most recently, Anna Boyd. Never one to draw attention to herself, Sue has guided, or should I say chased, countless students through the university admissions labyrinth, and her knowledge of application processes worldwide is second to none. As Anna Boyd so beautifully put it in her recent farewell message, Sue was my right and left hand and often my brain. Without her, I would never have been able to do my job. Next in our honor roll is Alan Wood, who left the college at the end of January this year. Alan started at the college in September 1996 as a geography teacher, having graduated from the University of Leicester in 1990 with his BA in geography. In 1998, he and his wife Heth became house parents. He went on to serve as a senior house parent and remained an assistant house parent until his departure. In addition to teaching and house parenting, Alan was also a key member of the outdoor faculty throughout his time at the college and since August 2012 was the head of that group. As such, Alan was heavily involved in the academic, co-curricular and pastoral journeys of students throughout his time here. Third on our list of long-serving departing staff is Nick Lush, who stepped down who stepped down in December following over 27 years at the college. Appointed as a chemistry teacher in 1990, Nick took on the additional responsibility of house parent in 1996. In 1998, he was promoted to senior house parent, a role he served with distinction until 2002 when he became vice principal pastoral. While Nick's responsibilities as vice principal were varied in his 15 years of service, during which time he worked alongside six principals, student welfare was always at the heart of everything he did. Few have left a mark as profound as Nick in the lives of generations of students, and we thank him wholeheartedly for his years of service. Member number four in the quintet is Chris Davis. Chris came to UWC Atlantic College in 1988 as a music teacher and became a house parent in August 1990, holding this position until the end of July 2003 in two different houses. An accomplished athlete as well as pianist, Chris won the Welsh Road Race Championship and the Welsh Closed Circuit Championship in 2001 and was rewarded with a place on the Welsh Veterans Endurance Squad. Chris was appointed head of faculty for Group 6 at the start of the 2009 academic year and has held this post ever since. In addition to his music teaching, Chris also teaches TOK. Chris's contributions to the college have been profound and were recognized in 2015 by the University of Chicago with their Outstanding Educator Award at the nomination of a former student. Finally, I would like to pay homage to our legendary mass teacher, Paul Belcher. Paul began working and living at UWC Atlantic College in September 1975 as an assistant mass teacher. Paul immediately joined the outdoor faculty, eventually becoming the chief coach of the UWCAC Beach Rescue Unit. In 1981, he and his wife Sue took on the role of house parents, and in 1982, Paul was appointed as head of faculty for mathematics, a pos position he fulfills to this day. A keen athlete, Paul took part in the World Quadrathlon Championships in Ibiza in 1982. 96, where he won the 45 to 49 year old category, thus becoming a world champion, having completed the five kilometer swim, 20 kilometer kayak, 100 kilometer cycle ride, 
and 21K run in eight and three quarter hours. In recognition of Paul's impact on generations of students, he was awarded the Teacher Tribute Award by Stanford University in 2013, having been nominated by a former student entering Stanford as someone who had played a significant role in their intellectual, academic, social, and personal development. Paul's contributions to the college are incalculable, and I would like to thank him on behalf of all his colleagues, both past and present, current and former students, and everyone whose life Paul has touched throughout his time here. Between them, Sue, Alan, Nick, Chris, and Paul have contributed a combined 140 years of service to UWC Atlantic College. You've preempted my next line, which is please join me in applauding their efforts and wishing them all the best for their futures. In closing, I would like to address our graduates who we are gathered here to honor today. For me, I will always consider you my first graduating class. If you give me the benefit of skipping the first term and a bit with my arrival in March 2017. Although given some of your attendance patterns, I probably caught up to some of you. <laughs> I will remain ever grateful to you for making me and my family feel so welcome from the moment we set foot on campus and for continually challenging me and my colleagues to make the college better. I am grateful for all you have brought us, your hopes, your fears, your sense of adventure and idealism, your critical minds, and your enthusiasm. The unique experience that is found at a UWC hangs on the trust that you have in each other, your willingness to celebrate each other's unique talents, and the support that you provide to each other each and every day. Such a community is something truly special that one experiences far too rarely in life, and it is why attending a UWC is so life-affirming and life-changing. I have no doubt that you will go out into the world with the knowledge that friendship, empathy, and humility will carry you far, that you will be open to new ideas and new people, that you will continue to challenge your comfort zones, and that you are aware that the only things you can truly control are your effort and your attitude, and that to try and fail is better than to never try at all. We salute you for all that you have accomplished and look forward to staying in touch. My very best wishes to you all. I would now like to ask our recently retired Student Council co-chairs, Arthur Krohn and Matthew Zhang, to conclude today's ceremony, after which I invite you to join us for a reception on the top lawn. And one more housekeeping note, second years, if you can remain seated until everyone has left. Thank you. We started writing this speech a while ago, but we did not complete it until just this morning. Actually, we had barely started this morning. And here's the thing, that's not because we're normal lazy AC students, is it Matthew? Instead, we wanted to avoid confronting the heartbreaking fact that we are actually leaving this place. At the beginning of the year, we quoted the poet Ranier Maria Rilke to begin the welcome ceremony to welcome our beloved first years. As we said so many months ago, quote, and now we welcome the new year, full of things that have never been. Today, we close off this beautiful lever ceremony, all the things that have become real in our two years at Atlantic College. We want to communicate one specific message that is not from an obscure German poet. This experience has changed us forever. In terms of graduating, this means three things. One, and it sounds cheesy, is love. As, Ma as Maya Angelou once said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. 
The desire to reach for the stars is ambitious. The desire to reach hearts is wise. It feels great to serve on the waves of success. We bet you feel like the kings and queens of the world right now. To be honest, we do too. But it is important to remember that even though we learn how to serve through our own hard work and dedication, we would not even be able to move one centimeter without the wave carrying us. Waves made of love, the love of our family that is always there for you. The friends that support you no matter what, and the many people working in the background that we hardly ever acknowledge. That one teacher that inspired you to even imply, apply. The cleaner that changes your bed sheets and keeps your corridor clean. The gardener that cuts our grass so we can relax on the M4 field. The maintenance staff that stop this place from falling apart. Without these people and many, many more, we would not be sitting here. So if you get the chance to say thank you, please do it. And even if we sometimes find ourselves in conflict, let us not remember those times that we fought over who owns the house pasta, <clears throat> suddenly, or disagreed, <laughs> or disagreed over deeply divisive political issues. After all, it is to our families that we often show our worst selves, the cruelest, snarkiest, rudest, angriest, most horrible versions of who we are because we trust that our families will still love us and we will love our families unconditionally. Here at Atlanta College, we chose our own brand new, big, international, and sometimes dysfunctional families, and we love them for everything they are. Being an alumnus of this UWC family is about giving back. It is about earning the privileges that this school has given us. When we have finally left this place by tomorrow, 2 p.m. sharp, and start to spread out around the world, we must spread the idea of gratitude, love, and humility like an infectious disease. Your UWC needs to reach out to other people and start a fire of peace and justice, love and kindness, and empathy and mutual respect. Number two, life after Atlantic College. The meaning of success is extremely difficult to define. If you ask students from Tice, it means having a clean, quiet room. If you ask teachers from Atlanta College, it means going to all of your codes. If you ask Arthur, he will say that success is defined under the neo-Marxist theory of civilizational disruption, which will upend the fundamental structures of our classist extortionist oligarchy. But our definition of success is very different. Success means to us becoming super rich through investment banking, creating an enormous charity in Atlantic College's name, and crushing the Shelby Davis Foundation with your own billion pound donation. There's no other way to be considered a successful alumni nowadays. But we are just joking. Ha 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 ha. Actually, we actually fundamentally disagree with that definition. It is unfortunate that in society nowadays, success is defined in that way. UWC needs to be different. UWC is different. There are so many different paths to take after Atlantic College. Some of us are taking gap years to travel the world, do community service, and grow as people. Others are joining civil services, militaries, or apprenticeships. And then there are the people who are starving for their university offers. We know who we are. All of these paths are different, and all of them have something to offer. But here is what will make us UWC students different, no matter where we are or what we are doing. We live our lives in service of others, dedicating everything we are and everything we do just to improve the lives of other people. We will throw ourselves into the most uncomfortable, trickiest, dangerous situations to fight for what is right and fair. The reality is that the world outside is filled with violence, discrimination, oppression, and injustice. Just look around. Many students here at Atlantic College have personally fought through literal war zones. UWC was an education, but it is, above everything else, an experiment. An experiment to find out how to right these wrongs. An experiment to test whether or not peace is possible, particularly amongst people that were never taught to live with each other. And the experiment truly starts today, as we go back into the real world. Part three, the pledge. This story was not our own. This was, is, and forever will be so much bigger and so much important, more, more important than any of us or our time here. This was about a movement thousands strong. This movement actually began here at Atlantic College. So, in the spirit of new beginnings, we are going to start a new tradition. 
where every graduating class of Atlanta College will commit to their own unique pledge. And here is the class of 2018's pledge. Please repeat after us. After every sentence, we'll pause. Don't freak. <laughs> we, the Atlantic College class of 2018, Commit to making our education into a force to unite peoples, nations, and cultures, into a passion for fighting injustice and inequality, and into career. Oh, sorry. <laughs> into a passion for fighting injustice and inequality. And into creating a loving global community for all. Most importantly, we commit to being the agents for positive change. Congratulations, class of 2018.